Hello everyone, in this video we are going to learn about the special tests for the hip joint. Special tests are certain tests performed in order to detect a pathology in the muscles or joints in which we put a stress on the affected structure. We will start with tests for shortness of hip flexor muscles. So the first test is called as Thomas test. This test identifies shortness of the hip flexor muscles. The patient position for this test is in supine lying with the patient lying at the edge of the bed. We will ask the patient to flex one of his leg and pull it towards his chest and hold it in that position. After that we will observe the opposite leg. If there is a flexion at the opposite leg or at the opposite hip joint it indicates a positive test and indicates tightness of the hip flexor muscles. Second test to identify a tightness of the hip flexor muscles is the Ellis test. A positive test indicates tightness of the iliosos muscle. In this test we will passively flex the knee of the testing limb and we will check for any flexion at the hip of the testing limb. Any flexion at the hip indicates a shortness or tightness of the iliosos muscle. Passively flexing the knee of the effect of the testing limb. Since there is no tightness or no flexion of the uh, hip seen, it indicates a negative test. Passive flexion. There is a flexion at the hip of the testing limb. This indicates a positive Ellis test. Next test is the Ober's test. It is a test to identify tightness of the tensor fascia lata muscle or the iliotibial band. The patient position is in side lying with the testing limb uppermost. The hips and the knees should be flexed. In this test, the therapist will passively extend and abduct the leg and then slowly lower the leg towards the bed. Inability of the uh, leg to touch the table or the plinth indicates a positive test for tightness of the iliotibial band or the tensor fascia lata muscle. While starting, we will place one hand over the pelvis over the greater trochanter to stabilize the pelvis. The other hand will be placed in the distal leg such that to maintain the knee in 90 degrees. Passively extend, abduct and slowly lower the leg towards the bed. The next test is the Faber-Patrick test or the figure of 4 test. Faber stands for flexion, AB for abduction and ER for external rotation. That is the test position we will use to check for this test. A positive test indicates possible hip joint pathology or SI joint dysfunction. The patient position for this test will be supine line. For testing, we will passively flex, abduct and externally rotate the leg, the testing leg such that the ankle of the testing leg lies over the knee of the opposite leg. Flexion, abduction, external rotation. Placing the ankle over the opposite knee, we will stabilize the pelvis, we will stabilize the ASIS of the opposite leg and slowly lower the knee of the testing leg. If the knee of the testing leg lies above the opposite knee, it indicates a positive test. Any reproduction of symptoms or pain in the hip joint or the SI joint region also indicates a positive test. The interpretation of this test is done by the site of pain. If the pain occurs in the hip joint area or the hip, over the hip joint, then it indicates a hip joint pathology. If the pain occurs over the SI joint, then it indicates SI joint pain or dysfunction. The next test is the 1990 hamstring test. This test is done to identify tightness of the hamstring muscle. The patient position for this test is supine line. For this test, we will passively flex the hip and the knee of the patient to each to 90 degrees. After that, we will passively extend the knee so that it reaches full extension. We will start this test by placing the hip and the knee of the testing limb in 90, 90 degrees of flexion. After that, we will stabilize the opposite knee towards the table. After that, we will passively extend the knee to the available range. Any lag in the extension range indicates a positive test. 
The next test is called as Trendelenburg's test. This test is done to identify weakness of the gluteus medius muscle. The patient position is standing. In standing position, we will ask the patient to flex one of his knee and stand on a single leg. After that, we will observe the level of both the pelvis. If the pelvis of the non-weight bearing leg is drooping in relation to the other, then it indicates a positive test and a weakness of the gluteus medius muscle of the weight bearing leg. You have to flex the knee and stand on a single leg. Now you heard the pelvis is not drooping in relation to the other, it indicates a negative test. In case of a positive sign, the pelvis of the opposite leg, non-weight bearing leg will droop in relation to the other leg. That was the end of the video for special tests for hip joint. We hope you liked it. Thank you.